about this time of year, we as gardeners start trying to outguess Mother Nature, trying to figure out just when that last freeze is going to come along so we can kind of guide when we're going to be planting our end of our cool season crops and the first of our warm season crops. Now many of you in Oklahoma, if I ask you when your last freeze date is, you could probably give us a pretty good idea. But I want to put a couple of maps up to kind of re-emphasize that and possibly some of you who are new to the state would like to find out when the freeze date is in your area. Now the first map is courtesy of the Oklahoma Climatological Survey. And if you'll look at the map starting in the southern part of the state, you'll see that around Ardmore in that area, the last freeze date is March 26. And then you move right on up through the northern part of the state out into the Panhandle, and their last freeze date is April 25th. So you can see there's almost a month's difference throughout the state of Oklahoma, and that's something that's real key in knowing when your planting dates are going to be. Now if you'll just study the map and spot your area, you'll see how the lines go across the map, and between those areas kind of gives you a range of approximately five days to ten days between one line and the other to kind of pinpoint when that last freeze date's going to be. Now a map in comparison to that is through the OSU research stations and it also shows the last date of killing frost in the spring but in the southern part it starts with March 30th and as you move on up through the state to the Panhandle, their last freeze date on this map is April 24th. So we'll see that there's about a day's difference in the Panhandle and approximately four days difference in the southern part of the state. So what is that telling you? Well, you need to know that these maps are really freeze probabilities. It means that there's still a 50% chance that you can get a freeze after that date. So really it's just a tool or a guideline to kind of go by and the most important thing for you to do is during that time is make sure you watch the weather to see if there's any potential of future cold spells that might affect what you're planting. One of the earliest crops and the favorite crops of the spring garden is lettuce and of course there's many different choices anymore from the catalog. A lot of them that are very cold tolerant that can be planted earlier and then a lot of new varieties that are coming out that are more heat resistant too in case you miss the earlier planting dates. And you've still got a few weeks that you can be planting these too. Now if you've been reading through your garden catalogs, you're probably noticing like I am a lot of references to lettuce or salad mixes or in some cases you notice it called mescaline mixes. And mescaline is just a French word for a mix of greens or lettuces. It's very simple. and what they're doing is they're selling you a blend of different varieties. Now, I've noticed that there's some of the companies that are adapting them to specialties in cooking. Some are adapting them to regional planting dates. Others are even finding mixes that are coming from other countries. So the sky's the limit. And of course, you know, there's a lot of catalogs that are very specialty oriented for cooking and heirloom type varieties. And sometimes you'll even find these in your garden center. So again, the sky's the limit in trying to find a mix like this. Now again, just read between the lines. Make sure you know what you're getting to find out if it will grow in your area. And as a general rule, the lettuces are going to germinate and, and be ready to harvest anywhere from 35 to 45 days. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make our own mescaline mix. And what we've done is we've selected three varieties, Black Simpson, or Simpson curled, it's just a cultivar of the black Simpson. Uh, we've also got one that's called Centennial, and this is a new one this year that actually starts out as a leaf type lettuce that you can harvest that way, but then if you allow it to grow, it will form a bib type or something similar to that. Not quite a head lettuce, but in between. And then another one that we liked last year is Royal Oak Leaf. Now you'll notice that there's a lot of different characteristics as far as shape and some variations of color, but I would encourage you to maybe throw in some greens like mustard greens or possibly some of the varieties that have red color to it to give you even more of an eye appeal. And what we're going to do is just take the jar here and we're going to just blend our seeds together and we're just going to sprinkle a few seeds of each one of these in the jar. And again, we've got three different varieties. I've seen some of the catalogs put in as many as five varieties in a mix. You're going to 
Now if you're wanting to keep track of which one's which, you need to keep your tags with you or make sure you label it well because when you mix them up like this it's hard to tell. And then we're going to add our third variety. And then what we're going to do is just mix those up real good in our jar. And we're going to plant under our greenhouse umbrella. Now this has been in the ground for several days to kind of help warm the temperature up a little bit. And the first thing we want to do is the soil has crusted, so we're going to loosen it up a little bit. And you can see it's nice and dry from the dust blowing. Level it out. And we are not putting any fertilizer in ahead of time on planting because our soil test tells us that our P and K, phosphorus and potassium levels, are adequate. So we're not putting any fertilizer in. And we are just going to sprinkle the seed in the planting area. Now again, we're not doing it in a row. It's just a nice mix. And obviously our spacing is going to be pretty close. But once they start to germinate, we'll come in and we can let them get pretty tall, cut them out, and harvest those, and then get our spacing down to about four to six inches. So after you've got some sprinkled in, what we're going to do instead of raking it in to cover it up, we're just going to put some of our good compost over the top from last year that we've gotten out of the compost pile. We're going to sprinkle it about a quarter of an inch, real shallow. And this is also going to give us a slow release nitrogen that will help in an organic form to help get these plants going. And then of course we'll water them in with our water can. One thing that I want to mention to you too is once they get going and you make your first, first harvest, you will need to come back and side dress them with nitrogen. Now you can use a synthetic, preferably a slow release nitrogen, but we'll probably use something like blood meal uh, or something high like alfalfa meal, something high of nitrogen to uh, get some support there. So after we water them in, since there's still a little risk, we're going to cover them back up and that will also help them germinate quicker. Now we're kind of on the tail end of planting some of the cool season things. Let me take you over here and show you some warm season crops we're going to put in early. Over the past couple of weeks we've shown you some very unique examples of coal frames to either overwinter those cool season vegetables or start your warm season transplants a little bit earlier. Now you're probably used to the term hot caps and many of you use like gallon milk jugs to cover up your transplants earlier, but one example of a plant protector hot cap that we've used at Oklahoma Gardening is a wall of water. And again it's been used here with great success for several years. And you can actually start the plants even six to eight weeks early using this wall of water. And the concept is little individual tubes of plastic that are filled with water. And the sunlight will penetrate through the water and actually warm it up and help insulate the inside of this. And as it goes together, it releases a little bit of heat, but it also keeps it very insulated during those cold temperatures. And some people have had success with using these in transplants even down into the 20s and the teens on some of these particular vegetables. Now the way this works is you usually get a package of three and they come uh, again anywhere from probably eight to ten dollars for a package of three but you place a container about a five gallon bucket upside down if you're going to put your transplants in ahead of time later on in the season but we're starting ours quite early so we're going to just put the plastic covering on first to warm up the soil a little bit before we plant. And then you just turn on the water and you fill up individual uh, cells a little bit at a time. And we've got a little tool here to help us. And you really want to fill them up about two thirds of the way. And you'd go around each one of those to fill them up. Then you would remove your bucket and that's when they come together. Now you can get some algae growth if you have a lot of sunlight and that's a good reason to put in just a little drop or two of the bleach to help keep that problem down. But after you remove the plant when it warms up in the summer, you've got to be careful or you'll get the bleach on the plant and you can burn the plant. So you've got to be real careful. But again, this is just a neat example of some of the things you can do to plant tomatoes, peppers, etc. several weeks early and get an early production. Before we leave you today, I want to remind you once again that if you didn't get your cool season lawn planted like fescue last fall, 
Now is a second best time to do that over the next few weeks. Again, there's many choices out there, so be sure and do your homework to find the one best suited for your location. Well, that's all the time we've got today. We hope you'll come back and join us next week on Oklahoma Gardens.